You missed some important news from the LGBTQ plus community this week. To ensure you are current, we are recapping that important news. Here's what you may have missed. Remember March 15th? America's shutdown over COVID-19 changed us all. Three years ago, our world was changed by a pandemic. Queer News Tonight first started reporting on COVID-19 at the end of January. And by February, we were reporting nightly on the spreading disease. Fittingly, it was from our set that was at the time housed at the World AIDS Museum. On March 15, 2020, the United States started the process of shutting down in an attempt to curb the spread of COVID-19. Science was still scrambling to understand the virus, and there was confusion in much of the media coverage over what the best safety practices were. On March 18th, the Happening Out television network was hit directly by the virus, as unknown to us, its Happening Out political commentator, Ron Berneski, had contracted the virus prior to his March 18th appearance on our weekly talk show. Two days later, he was hospitalized and by the weekend had been placed in a medically induced coma from which he would never wake before passing. Through a community partner, the network was able to get some of the new tests, administered, administered the cast and crew of the shows, and host Chef Josie also tested positive. She would continue to test positive for a full month. The struggles of the network were just a small sample of the ways that LGBTQ plus community was hit in general by the pandemic. It, with many members of our community working in the service industry, the stop to travel and the closing of bars and restaurants meant no income to many LGBTQ plus individuals. For those who weren't in contact with family due to their gender or sexual identity, the lockdowns and quarantines meant an increase in mental health issues such as depression, as well as an increase in substance abuse issues. Challenges that disproportionately affect the transgender members of our community and the BIPOC community were compounded as a lack of health care and stable housing led to a higher risk of in those individuals contracting the virus. Three years later, our community is still recovering from the pandemic and lockdowns. Social events are only now starting to become popular again, and vacations like cruises are still considered risky by many. March 15, 2020, we remember. White House says attacks in America are dangerous to LGBTQ plus America. The White House on Friday com commended it, what it described as hateful and dangerous attacks on LGBTQ plus people as Republicans in various U.S. states pursue laws targeting the community's rights. Speaking to reporters, White House spokesperson Karine Jean-Pierre pointed to Republican calls to ban gay marriage through legislation in Iowa and Tennessee, as well as moves to limit protections for same-sex couples in Florida. In a press briefing, Jean-Pierre said, open quote, in Florida, just Florida alone, Republicans introduced 20 bills, 20 bills on a single day to roll back the rights of LGBTQ LGBTQ plus community, end quote. She explained that more than 450 anti-LGBTQ bills have been introduced in U.S. states and pointed to a proposed Florida bill that would give the state the right to separate transgender children from their parents. Jean-Pierre said the Biden administration will continue to call out attacks on the LGBTQ plus community. Republicans in various states have pursued a wave of laws directed at LGBTQ plus people, limiting transgender participation in sports, access to gender affirming medical care, and the teaching of subjects related to gender identity or sexual orientation. Tennessee lawmakers passed legislation last month restricting drag performances in public or in front of children. West Virginia's attorney general on Thursday said, the state will ask the U.S. Supreme Court to allow enforcement of a law banning transgender athletes from female sports teams. Biden recalls first time he saw a gay couple and how his father explained gay love. Joe Biden made his first appearance on The Daily Show since taking office as the president of the United States. He weighed in on attacks against LGBTQ plus Americans while sitting down with actor and former Obama administration staffer, staffer Cal Penn for a segment that aired Monday night. In the White House interview, guest host Penn, who is engaged to his longtime boyfriend, asked President Biden how he came to be a vocal supporter of marriage equality. Biden responded by saying he hadn't thought much about it. 
When he was a senior in high school, he saw two well-dressed men in suits kissing each other. Biden's dad was there to drop him off. Biden said, quote, I turned and looked at my dad and he said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. It's just that simple. It doesn't matter whether it's a same sex or a heterosexual couple. You should be able to, to be married. What is the problem? End quote. Biden made history as the vice president in 2012 when he announced his support of same-sex marriage before the Obama administration had a chance to sign off, becoming one of the most prominent politicians to stand for LGBTQ plus rights at the time. Keep watching the only television news in the world from our LGBTQ plus community and stay informed on everything that is important for and about our diverse LGBTQ plus community.